Hello, guys. Welcome to everyone. Can everyone hear me? Hello? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, teacher. teacher. Perfect. Okay, so thank you very much, guys, for being here on time. Uh, well, today is Monday. I completely understand that probably some of you are already tired. Because, you know, it's Monday, and Mondays I are, they are, like, busiest every, like, from every week. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much for being here. So we're going to try to learn today as many things as possible. How was your weekend? Who can tell me about the weekend? How was your weekend? Did you work? Did you, you know, did you relax? Did you have to do something? What did you guys do on your weekend? Any opinion? Can you hear me? Um, yes. Or am I talking to myself? <laughs> <clears throat> um, my... My last weekend was very busy. Uh, I I had to work Saturday oh, you... on Sunday too. Oh my yep. god! Yeah, but um, I'm trying to to rest. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, today I take I. I take um so many times to practice um and look and uh, watching some videos okay for, for practicing on my list and and my okay that's that's good i I know it as you said that you worked on the weekend, so that must be a little bit tiring. I know that working on weekends is very tiring because you know that most of the time people, uh, they usually relax on the weekends or they get out with family or something like that. But you know, when we have to work, we have to work. That's what we have and there's nothing else that we can do. So otherwise we wouldn't be able to survive. You know what I mean? It's like, that's how it is. It is what it is. So, uh, well, thank you for the ones that just connected. Uh, today, guys, we're going to have a little bit of grammar, and today uh, we're going to see something that probably you have never seen before. It's going to be probably the first time that some of you have heard or have seen this grammatical topic. For some of you, the, this might be like, you know, like a reminder or, or something like that, or probably some of you already have an idea of what we're going to talk today so um when you listen to the word or to the topic relative clauses do you guys have any idea about that do you guys know what a relative clause is or you have no idea at all no yes sure i have a little idea but i can't explain it okay okay at least you got an idea about what we're going to talk about today so let me start sharing the screen uh i see more people connecting right now i really don't know if the other ones are going to connect or not i hope you do because remember you have to have attendance and we're taking your attendance in here Okay, um, well, let me just go ahead and start sharing my screen so you can guys have an idea. Well, uh, today we're going to have grammar, but uh, we're also going to try to have, you know, a little bit of practice because we need everything. So we're going to have grammar. At the same time, we're going to try to have practices because we're going to try to cover everything or as much as we can in just one hour. So we have here relative clauses. What are relative clauses? 
and something very easy and the easiest way for me to explain to you without using terminology that you might probably like you won't understand it's like relative clauses are clauses that are going to give us extra information regarding to a person thing place or something like that so uh i will just would like to have uh, let's see um let me have jenny jenny please help me read in let's see this okay let me help me with this this and this part right here okay what are relative clauses okay no 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 we still you're still saying closes no you're telling me cerrado no okay uh, what, how do we pronounce this clauses no classes say it again clauses clauses correct go ahead what are relative clauses Okay. Relative clauses mm -hmm. give us information about the person, thing, place mentioned. Mentioned. Okay, mentioned. mentioned. Okay, great. So as, as I was saying before, it's just extra information that we get about a person, thing, or place mentioned. So we have some examples right here. And uh, of course, these are general examples. We are going to go one by one and I will explain them all step by step so you can finally understand it all. Uh, at this moment, we are just going to read them because they are general examples. But as I said, we're going to go one by one. So let me listen to you, Arturo. Go with the first one, please. Jack, who's retired now. It's been a lot of... Say this one again. Retired. 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 Retired mm -hmm. now. Say this one again. I'm sorry. Retired now. 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 Mm -hmm. Spend a lot of time with his. Okay, remember, we, I'm sorry that I'm interrupting you, but remember, we have a letter S. So we have two S spends. sound. Spends. Spends. Mm -hmm. Spends a lot of time with his grandchildren. Thank you very much. Now, let's go with you, uh, Iris. <clears throat> Hi, teacher. Hi, let's go with this one. Okay, a cereal. Cereal. A cereal. Murderer. 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 Murderer is a person who kills several people. Thank you very much. Now let's go with you, uh, Janira. Good evening. Good evening. I found an a a prong mm -hmm. which, which that was covered in blood. Say this one again. Covered. Repeat it again. Covered. Okay. Uh, does anyone has any idea how do we pronounce that word? Covered. Covered. Correct. Say that again. Covered. Uh, Without the last E. Right. Covered, correct. Covered, uh -huh. covered in blood. Blood. This is not blood. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Now let's go with you, Daisy. The last one. Which, which chapel? With chapel. The chapel was the district. The district. District where Jack the Reaper operate. operated. 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 Okay, good. Now, um, still, guys, um, I see that we still need to see the regular verbs and 
the pronunciations that we have to do at the end, we're still having some issues in some pronunciations, but that's okay. Now, the, the words uh, that you can see here in, in white are the relative clauses. Now, as I said before, these are just general examples for you to have an idea about what a relative clause look like. So this is how it looks like. Now, you might tell me like, or you might think about like, oh, but this looks like uh, something that we saw some days ago. Do you guys remember about what we saw some days ago? What type of clauses did we see already? Direct and indirect clauses. Indirect or direct clauses? We did we did we see that? <laughs> Does anyone remember what type of clauses did we see some days ago? Um, defining and non-defining. Yeah, non -defining. Def defining and not did we see them already? Hmm. Are you are you understanding my question? That's for, first of all. Are you guys understanding my question? What type of clauses did we see already? Hmm. Non clause. Non. Say it again. Noun clause. Now, noun clauses. That's those are the ones that we already saw. Noun clauses. Looks like if we have an exam right now, everyone gets a zero. Looks like that. Okay, so who can tell me about noun clauses? What do you guys remember about noun clauses? There are the, three types. Three types, okay. Yeah, direct and indirect, indirect, <laughs> and, the, and the subject. And the subject. So, do they have? Uh, do we? Do they have uh, anything that they do in a sentence? Do they have uh, an action? How do we uh, identify them? It's like the receptor, or or is the class that received the action of the verb. That receives the action of the verb. Okay. Good. So, well, I will, I will, I will prepare like, you know, a surprise exam just for me to check how you guys doing on the tenses that we just already saw. Because looks like we're kind of, you know, like we really don't remember. Some of you do, some others are like, oh my God, what's that? Well, at least you guys have some idea. If you don't, please go ahead and try to, you know, to remember that. Because at the end of the module, we're going to have an exam. And that's for sure. We are going to have an exam. So uh, let's start and let's move on with the type of relative clauses we have. And these ones, we only have two types of relative clauses. Defining or identifying clause and non-defining or non-essential clause. Nadie me corrigió y esperé que me dijeran, teacher, no era clause, era clause. Aha, nobody is paying attention. Okay, I'm just checking out. We are, we are, re we are re re uh, right, teacher. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to take that as a, as a ballot, let's say. Alrighty. So, uh, we have these two are the only ones. We You can find them either as defining or identifying clause, or you can find them as non defining or non essential clause. So, we're going to go by each one of them so we can really understand. It's very important that we know relative 
pronounce and you can tell me. But teacher, isn't that a WH question? Yes, it is. But in this type of relative clauses or in grammar, let's say, we call to this little WH question, we call them WH questions when we use them to create questions. We call them relative pronouns when we use them in the middle of a sentence to give either extra information or to work as a part of the grammar. You know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Are you guys following me? Yes, sure. <clears throat> well, I hope so. Well, so in this part of the relative clauses or in this part of the grammar, we call them relative pronouns. And which are they? We have all the WH questions pretty much. We have who, which, whose, that, where, when. We already know how to use them, right? We know that who works with what? People. Which works with what? Animals, objects, or ideas. Whose is for what? Position. Now, this one is not very common. Not very much people or not too many people use this WH question or relative pronoun. Now, can someone give me an example making one sentence or creating one sentence using the WH question whose? Who is she? Say that again. Who is she? Who is she? That's a good question, though, but you are not using whose. Who's that computer? Who's that computer? What's the answer? Thank you, Debbie. Can someone give me the answer of that question? Who's that computer? When we are referring to um, no people. Mm -hmm. Um, teacher. Go ahead, Wendy. Uh, maybe the answer will be that computer belongs to Jose. We can use uh verbs of possession. That's what that was a good example. Belongs. That's a good verb of possession. Or we could simply say that is. Possess computer, you know, using something that you already know. So we don't have to complicate that much. So I was just trying to, well, let's move on. We have that, we have where, that it is used for places, and when, of course, is used for the time. Now, obviously, we're going to see each one of them, this one and this one, and I will try to explain to you by some examples. And if I am explaining something to you and you are not able to understand or you don't understand at all what I'm saying, please, please ask questions, as many questions as possible so you can understand, okay? Now, let's move on and let's start with the first one, which is a defining relative clause. Now, uh, let's see, let me have uh, Jenny once again to help me read in this part. Okay, defining relative clause gives essential information to define or ident identify, identify, Ident identify or identify the person or thing place we are talking about. Say this one again. We are talking about. Okay, when we say this one, we never ever pronounce the letter L. So we don't uh -huh. say talking. So we say we are talking about talking, exactly. Talking okay. about. Okay. Very good. Now Maritza, I want you to help me with this one and this one. Okay. Dogs that like at are very unusual. You knew unusual unusual mm -hmm. which dogs mm -hmm. they live in a house whose roof is 
full of holes. Hall. Which house? Hall. Halls. Okay. Now, thank you very much. And I will just try to explain these two examples. So, really pay attention to this, guys. We have the small definition or explanation about defining relative clause. What's that? It's essential information to define or identify the person thing place we're talking about. Now, you might wonder why do we have this question between parentheses? Why that? Can someone tell me why am I using which in here? Any idea? Don't. Because uh, we are talking about pets or pets. animals. Animals. And as we said before, which is used for animals, objects, or ideas. Now, this question that we have between parentheses is the question that is helping us to identify the, rel the defining relative clause. Now, something very important is that, well, let's read it again. Those that like cats are very unusual. Now, which dogs? The ones that like cats you see that's 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 why we have this question in here now something very important or something that you have to remember about defining relative clause is that this information do you think that if i take it away will that still make sense could you repeat it no. please yeah. No teacher, it doesn't have sense. Okay, arriving. What's the verb that we use when we want to say no tiene sentido? I told uh, you last time. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay, forget the verb having there. Okay. Now, if we take this away, for example, can I say dogs are very unusual? Can I say so? If you're talking about Mark. Mars, maybe. <laughs> Mars, what's that? El planeta Marte. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Because dogs here in Salvador are very usual. Yeah. Dogs are very unusual. Now, if I take this away, of course, uh, I will still need to know more information. Why you are giving me no a full meaning? If I say dogs are very unusual, but like which dogs? Or well, what are you talking about? You see, that's why the defining relative clause is very important. Why? It gives essential information, you see, to define or identify the thing, personal place we're talking about. Now, if we go to this one, let's go to this one. No, that's too easy. Uh, let's go to a country where the sun always shines. Can you make a sentence, a uh, question, I'm sorry, like this one from this sentence? Which country? Which country? Do you think that that is a correct question? Maybe. Maybe. Thank you for, for your participation, but what about the others? She already gave her point of view. What about you guys, the others? Try to pay attention to the context, and the context will obviously give you uh, gives you an answer. Let's read it again. Let's go to a country. But, but what? In this case, teacher, maybe it is it is a good moment uh, the people speak about the the shine uh, on 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 your on yourself. No, it is or oh, is really really country. But in never I don't know. But for me, in the in the in the planet, always the sun is 
maybe it is not it is not there it's not it's not where uh-huh I don't know, for me, it's, it is a, how do you say metaphor? A, a metaphor? A metaphor by yourself. Yeah, well, we could be talking about a metaphoric situation. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I, I can understand. But now, the others, do you agree with what Daisy, I guess that was Daisy, the one that said that? Yeah. Do you agree with the question she said? Which country she said? Teacher could be where can we go or where do we we where do we go? Where do we go? Okay, that's a good try. I mean, what about the others? Now let's only have these two. I need you guys uh, to raise your hand if you think that arriving question is the right one. Nobody trusts an arriving. Okay, so we have Wendy. She thinks that's that's the right one. We have Daisy. Well, she doubted herself because now she's thinking that arriving sounds there is the right one. Okay, so okay, we have another person. We have Philomena, and we have Arturo. Now, and okay, good. Now. Raise your hand, guys. You can put it down, the others. Put it down. Now, uh, raise your hand if you think that Daisy's question is the right one. Nobody. Not even Daisy herself. Well, okay. Now let's Sorry, try. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, we're not saying that yours is incorrect. No, we're not saying that. We're just trying to find out if either yours or Eri Beam's ones is the correct one. Now let's try to find that out. Let's go to a country where the sun always shines. If we get which country? Do we get. Do we get an answer from that? Do we get something from that? Which country? Uh huh. In the search teacher, but it's not exactly in the country. Okay, now Arabian's question was where, which country, or what country do we go? Is that what you said? No, where can we go? Where can we go? Where can we go? Now, if we ask that question, where can we go? Do we get an answer from that? Hmm. It's in a, it's in a, in a, sentido figurado, teacher. In a figurative sense. In a figurative sense, the, the question is it in, in a figurative sense, because it, <laughs> Yeah, of course, it's, we, we get the sun always shines in every single country. And there's one country, I guess, in the world where the sun is like pretty much 24 seven, as far as I know. Now, let me let me go with Arabin's question. He said, where, yeah, Daisy. Maybe where is that country? Where is the country? That's another option, but now let's first of all try to find that out with Arabin's question. He said, where do we go? If we say that, remember that the question needs to give you exactly the answer that we have in, how do we say this color? Noun class, noun class. 
now green. green yeah in green the one that we have in green guys it's like uh it's like either you're here today or you're not here it's like oh my god that's too much for today okay now here i've been said where do we go if we take that question the answer will be to a country where the sun always shines now we get all these together so since the very moment that we get to a country we are not longer getting a defining relative clause why because we're getting something extra and the subject is getting involved on the defining relative clause and the defining relative clause is only extra information but essential information so we cannot take a rhyming's question so we're going to take daisy's one because we're talking about a country and if we go back to this which one does that below to each country idea it will be an idea since the fact that we're talking about something that is uh, like a metaphoric situation, let's say. Okay, so we say which country, the country, like, or where the sun always shines. Do we understand or we're getting lost on this explanation, guys? I need you to be honest, please. If you're not really understanding, let me know so that I, I will try another way to try to explain you this situation. Are you guys following me up to now? Teacher, for me, it's, it's so confused. It's a little confusing, yeah, but you're still saying mi camisa. You're not telling me, maestro. You have not been practicing, so thank you for reminding me. It's God wanting me to help you. So say uh, teacher again. Huh? <laughs> say teacher, not t-shirt. <laughs> teacher. Okay, it's a little better, but we still need to practice. Well, okay, so what is the part that is confusing you, uh, Janira? Is there something that you are not understanding from this part or something that is not being clear to you? Uh, I I think that uh, in par the words in parentheses mm -hmm. is the... Obvious is the question. Is the question in the, in the complete sentences is the the answer, right? No, this the sentence or the okay. This question is only used when you want to identify where is located the defining relative clause. If let's let's suppose that we have an exam today and in the exam the teacher tells you okay let's imagine that we have nothing in green and that everything is black mm -hmm. so the teacher tells you okay we have dogs that like cats are very unusual now the teacher tells you find on that sentence the defining relative clause how are you going to identify it if you don't know? So there is where this question helps you to identify where it is located. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand that part? Um, it's not me, could you repeat yet, again sure. the, the last part My, that you say? Please. The, said, the what? Please. The last part that you said, please. With, okay, the, what I was saying is that this question here yes. is, is the one that, I, that is going to help us to identify the defining relative clause. For mm -hmm. example, if we do not have this part in green, how are you going to identify it? How? You uh, you will never think about it like, oh, this is the one. Mm -hmm. 
will you? Now, so how are you going to identify it? For example, in this one, they live in a house whose roof is full of holes. Now, if we tell you like, oh, where is, where is the defining relative clause? First of all, of course, you will have an idea by taking a look after WH question or relative pronoun. You see? When you, yeah. In this, in this example, maybe can be two options. For example, who and where. The answer, for example, in this case, they live in a house. They live in a house whose roof is full of holes. The question, it is a question, for example, where is the house? Uh, who is the house? Similar? No. Two, two questions, but then, no. Okay, what I need you to remember is this. Once again, we go back to this. This thing right here is what is going to be really, really, really important. Why? If we have who's, we're talking about possession, you know, where, places, when, time, who, is just to refer people. Now, if we go back to what, what we have here, they live in a house. What is house? First of all, what's that? A thing. It's, that's a thing or an object, right? So there, based on what we have in here, we have which, and now we ask which house. And automatically we have whose roof is full of holes. You see, another way to identify is by taking a look to what? Oh, sorry. To this, to the relative pronoun. So let's imagine or let's suppose that this part in green is not in green, that is in black. And you see these sentences. They live in a house whose roof is full of holes. Automatically, as you see this part, you will think about it. Oh, okay. So that's either a relative clause now, I want you to have something very clear, not to get confused with the noun clauses, okay? Because you might remember that noun clauses are also identified by the WH question. Now, what is the difference between a noun clause and a relative clause? That's the first thing that we have to know. A noun clause can act as subject, object, and, and of the object of the preposition and a yes. noun clause it always act as a noun having or you know as an object direct object or object of the preposition now the relative clause the let's say the, the part that plays a relative clause in grammar is that they act as adjectives. What? Giving you extra information. What does an adjective do? It describes, it gives you more information regarding to what? The subject. You see? Do you understand? Do we understand that part? Well, I hope so, guys. Believe me, and if you're having any situation understanding, please, please let me know, okay? And we can have, you know, more practices later on for you to completely understand it. Teacher. Yeah? And then, uh, in the second one, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the word whose is not for refer a, a, a question. Instead of a house, instead of a, the people, mm -hmm. in this case, they. Exactly, exactly. You finally understood why? Because instead of repeating they, we're mm -hmm. not saying they live in a house, they, your roof is full of holes. So instead of that, we're using whose, because we're talking about they, okay. and that's their possession. You see? 
Okay. okay. You, you're understanding. That's that's something good. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's yeah, it's better. So now let's go to these examples that are going to help you guys to understand a little bit better. Now let's see. Defining relative clause or uh relative pronouns. Now to give essential information about people, we are going to use who or what or that. And we I need you to pay attention to this. Because that can also be used for things. Okay? Now, let's. we're going to have more examples later on. And let's try to see this one. This is the man who told me the news. In this part, we are only identifying the relative pronoun. Now, can someone tell me what will be a question for you to identify a defining relative clause in this one? Uh huh. Any idea? Can you repeat? Can you repeat the question, teacher? Please. Okay. So, can any one of you make a question to identify the defining relative clause? For me, in this case. Mm -hmm. Question to defining a relative clause. Okay. This is. The man who told me. I yes. think I think about their isn't relative close. Their isn't mm. okay. Arturo, yeah. Um, <laughs> we can we can ask. Mm -hmm. Um, who is the man? Who is the man? Exactly. Who is the man? Who told me the news? Is that a good one? Um, who is the man that told you the news? Who is the man that told you the news? Now, guys. No, we're, we're, we're trying to understand... But in this one, we are not um, checking, actually, uh, define a relative clause. The only thing that we're trying to identify in here is the relative pronoun. What are the relative pronouns? Let's go back to here. You see, these are relative pronouns. As I told you, you might get confused with the terminology because we all know these little words as WH question. We call them WH questions when we use them to make questions. When we use them in grammar, depending on the situation or depending on the context, that might change. In this case, because we're talking about relative clauses, the name of these little words is going to change to relative pronouns. Okay? Clear? I hope so. Well, the letter that was delivered was from my boss. Here, once again, we're only identifying the relative pronoun. This is the house where we lived in, in when I was young. The cat whose left eye is injured is called Tom. He wouldn't tell which we had already expected. Okay? Good. Any question regarding to this part right here? Well, Speaker. yeah. So, in the different when when you talk about the relative clause and noun clause is where in relative clause you need in the sentence we need to we need to have for example for example which so we can identify that but because we have he 
In this case, he is a noun. Mm -hmm. And he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't tell which, but in, when, you, when we, we have a, a, a class, a noun class, we need to have two there and two personal pronouns, in this case, uh, two nouns. Okay. But in this case, only, only one need to have one relative class. Okay, so when we talk about the difference between the, them both, one thing that we need to remember is that noun clause, it's, it has its specifications, which is can act as a subject, can act as an object, direct or indirect, or can act as an object of the preposition. But their function is as noun. Even though it is a noun clause, what is the difference between a noun and a noun clause? A noun is only one word, noun. A noun clause is still acting as a noun, but it, it, ha it is a full sentence. So that noun clause is going to act as a noun, but relative clauses are going to act as adjectives. And what an adjective do? What they do is that they describe and they give you more information regarding to what? To the subject. So that's what we need to identify. Every single time that we have a relative clause, that information is going to be related to who? To the subject. To the subject. That's the only thing that we have a page to pay attention to. And most of the time, the relative clause is going to be next to the subject because that's what we have in here, remember? Here we have, who's the subject in here? Jack. Who's the subject in here? Person. Who's the subject in here? Apron. What's an apron? Delantal. Delantal, exactly. What's, what's, the, what's the object in here? The district, you see? So every single time the relative clause acting as an adjective, giving you extra information is going to be next to the what? Subject. That is a tip or something that is going to help you identify it, okay? Now let's move on to this part. Here, we have an example where the uh, pronoun is not needed, what does it mean? That we can omit it. We can omit it. How do we do that? When the relative clause already has a subject, we can drop the relative pronoun. What does it mean? That's why we have it in between parentheses. It does not mean, guys, that if you say, if you say the pronoun won't be correct, no. It, all, it will also be correct. What, what's the difference? The difference is that if you say that, you will sound as if you're learning the language. But if you don't say it, it will sound as if you are a native speaker of the language. Example, Mary Kelly was a young girl. Everybody loved very much. Can I say Mary Kelly was a young girl? who everybody loved very much? Yes, teacher, you can say. I can say that, okay. So what are we saying in here? Why do we omit it? It says here, because when the relative clause already has a subject, and what is the subject in here? Young girl. It's, that's the subject. Pay okay. attention. Um what? Mary Kelly? No, no Mary, Mary Kelly. Okay, let's read this again. When the relative clause already has a subject, what is the relative clause in here? The one that we have in green. So what is the subject oh, me, of the me. relative clause? Girl. The subject of everybody? Everybody, because if I say everybody, that's a subject, right? So 
If I wouldn't have a subject, si yo no tuviera everybody, yo podría decir who loved very much or that loved very much. But since the moment, desde el momento en que tenemos un, un what? Un subject, subject. subject. un subject en la um, relative dentro clause. De la relative. Exactly, dentro, dentro de la relative clause, yeah. we omit, lo omitimos. ¿El qué? El relative pronoun. That's the only thing. Now here, oh, yeah. the police... Let's see. Vamos a ver cómo me pronuncian esta. Um, all right, Bean, how do, how do you pronounce this one? Examine it. Examine it. Wendy. I'm not pretty sure, but I think it's examine. Arturo, how do you think that would say that? Examine. The police examined all the letters they received. Si yo no tuviera they aquí, ¿puedo usar un, re ¿puedo usar un relative pronoun? Yes, I can. Yes. Pero desde el momento en que yo tengo un subject, que en este caso es they, yo lo omito. Okay? That's just for grammatical purposes. Okay? And... To don't say... To don't say uh... No, don't will say uh, the police examine all letters which they recite, re receive. Receive, which they receive. No, that, that will be your double repeating. Mm -hmm. Estás doblemente mm -hmm. repitiendo la mm -hmm. misma information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, clear so far? Estamos entendiendo so far, guys? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Well, uh, lo vamos a dejar hasta acá esta parte porque si no se me van a confundir con la segunda. Esta era la defining relative clause. Luego vamos a la no defining relative clause. Se recuerdan que hay dos tipos. I think it's enough for today just to have one, just to make like to have a little rest on, on our brains because if not, it's going to explode. Because we have seen too much information for today. Okay. Uh, now, it has been clear the one that we saw so far. Or do you guys still have any question regarding to this one? Tenemos alguna pregunta por la defining relative clause? Um, teacher, in some case, mm -hmm. um, in the um, relative pronouns, mm -hmm. um, we can use whom. Can you spell that for me? Whom. H. And, um, sorry, and W. W H O M. Oh, I know what you mean. Whom? Okay. Uh, whom? Do you guys know the difference uh, when we use who and whom? Does any one of you know the difference between who and whom? Quien y de quien. Okay, but when it comes to, you know, like the usage, when mm. do we use who and when do we use whom? I think whom is for possession. For possession, okay. Oh. Who else? Um, whom we can use for the more, uh, more formal. Okay, of course, yeah. Whom is when we want to use it as a very, very formal way. And who is informal, okay? Who is the one uh, that we use every single time when we're talking in English and that's used among everybody that speaks the language? Who is whom is only used when you want to write a very formal document or when you're giving a speech in front of the president of any country? There you can use whom. Otherwise, the majority, if not everybody, uses who. 
even though it is informal, but that's part of the usage of the language. Now we're going to stop, I will stop sharing in here. And is there any other question regarding to that or we're clear so far <clears throat> with the first one? Are we clear? Guys, help me to help you so we can all be clear. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, sure. Yeah. I guess yeah. so. My classmate and me. Um, well, we, I uh, we don't believe us. We understand a little bit, but we didn't practice. I know. I know. Uh, I know that e uh, English grammar can be a little bit tricky. You know, um, that can be a little bit tricky and to speak, to learn to speak in the right way, using all grammatical structures correctly, it's a little bit difficult. But uh, believe me, it's like uh, then you don't even think about it. It's like when you're speaking, you don't even think about it. That's why sometimes you make mistakes because you don't know how to make or how to create or how to speak the language in, like in the correct way. Now, before we go in the last four minutes, we're going to go to the breakout rooms. And I, I have a conversation in here. What I want you to do is just to read it. I will be checking you all, guys. I just want you to read that. And before we go, just to have a little practice regarding to that. Now, uh, let me just share the screen so you can all have it. Can you all see it? Can you all see it? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Teacher. yes. Okay, we're going to try. We're going to be working on that word teacher because some of you are still telling me t-shirt. Don't know why. But, okay. Teacher. All right. So, okay, good. Let's go ahead and try to do that practice. Uh, for you not to take too much of time, what I need you to do, one person reads one line, another person reads line number two, another person reads line number three, and so on and so on and so on. I haven't. Okay. Hey, Michaela. Mm, I haven't slept. Okay. Wendy? Are you okay? What's the matter? Um, Daisy? Where? The thing. I can't. Uh, sorry, we have a problem. Um, we have not the the screenshot the conversation. Neither I, I just have a, neither uh, one of you. Cell phone. I um I I have conversation, but in, in my cell phone. I'm trying to yes, the safe, the to, safe uh, because... upload. upload. I Let start. Me, give me a sec. Well, it, the time is almost over, so we're going to leave it like that, and we're going to try to do that tomorrow, okay? So let me just uh, move in here.
Well, guys, we didn't have too much time to do that. Some of you didn't even have the the screenshot. Uh, so um, I know that today was a little bit confusing because we saw, you know, grammatical things in grammar. It's not funny at all, right? It's not funny like, oh, I'm going to learn grammar today. Wow, not nah, right. It's like, not like that. It's not funny, but it's something that is going to help us all, you know, to be speak the language in the right way. Tomorrow, we are going to have uh, another review regarding to this. Tomorrow, we're going to hit, to see uh, the non-essential one. And we are going to have more practices uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, okay? Um, as we did last time, on Thursday, we're going to try to have more activities. So, uh, we're going to have more speaking activities. Because um, um, I have been checking, you know, and I still see that some of you are struggling when it comes to speaking. I really don't know if that's because you are afraid or I was going to ask you guys if you feel comfortable with me, you know, interrupting you and then telling you what you are mispronouncing. Because I know that for some people that might be disrespectful and I just want to respect everyone's opinion. So if any one of you does not like that, please let me know. So I will try to do it in a different way. But so far, does anyone has any complaint regarding to that? Regrets for being in this model with me or something? No? Mm -hmm. Not what at all. Say al contrario, teacher. Okay. Alrighty. So uh I will try I will try to be doing what I've been doing with you guys, you know, interrupting you when you're speaking, if you're mispronouncing one word or if I listen to you. That's why I try to, you know, to make everyone to participate. Because I see that some of you do not participate or do do not like to speak probably because you are afraid of mispronouncing something. But at the end of the day, guys, you will have to speak. So imagine you are in front of an American or someone who speaks the language. Of course, you will freak out. I'm pretty sure the first, the very first time you will freak out, you will forget everything about the English language and you will want to say hello and you will say something else. That's the first thing. I remember when I when I had my first conversation in English with uh, someone native of the language and I freaked out 100%. It's like I forgot everything I had learned at that moment. So that's going to happen to you. So if we can practice in here, that's that will be the best option. OK, and as I said, we're going to try to have more speaking practices, as many as we can. So I hope you guys are doing great and uh, you're working on the platform as well. If you have any situation going on, let me know and I will be here to help you out. So I hope you all guys have a good night and thank you very much for attending to the class today. See you guys tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you, teacher. Thank you so much. Bye. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you. Oh, that was a good pronunciation though. <laughs> <laughs>